All right. So some great applications, and now let's turn our attention to what the NI team's been doing. Now, we've been really busy over the last year developing a lot of software. Uh, we already talked about a couple of them, but let's bring on the rest of the NI team to talk about some more product announcements. Please welcome to the stage Jen, Kanal, Kelsey, and Josh. Yeah. OK, sorry about that. Now, Jen. Um, last year, you helped me release LabVIEW on XG 1.0, and one of the promises we made to our customers is they could expect to see a lot of features and a lot of software from us in a short amount of time. That's right. We've been working really hard to meet that promise. Today, I'm proud to introduce our latest version of LabVIEW in XG. With new application building capabilities, integrated hardware configuration, the ability to change control properties at runtime, object-oriented programming, and support for a wider portfolio of hardware, LabVIEW NXG is quickly evolving from interactive measurements to creating custom test systems. That is a lot of features. So we just pick one to talk about today. Yeah, well, throughout development, my team works closely with lead users to share early product concepts as well as pre-release software builds. And from those conversations, we've heard a lot of excitement about the ability to compile code to run in a web browser. This kind of no-install web UI is especially useful for monitoring remote systems. For example, the web page we're looking at here is showing some of the most relevant data from a few of the demos you may have seen on the expo floor this morning. From this single web dashboard, we can see the strain of our windshield wiper test, the vibration of the excavator, and the latest stats from an electronics production test system. Now, the exciting thing about this is that to create it, I didn't need to learn anything new. I just used the same LabVIEW language and workflow that I already know. So as Kelsey is interacting with the source VI, you can see that doing things such as dropping while loops and navigating the palettes, it's all pretty much the same. Now, Jen, when you showed the front panel, we clearly indicated that some of these systems are running LabVIEW NXG and some are running LabVIEW 2018. Right, so you need LabVIEW NXG to create the web VI, but not to publish data. So by adding just a few VIs to my existing systems, I can communicate remotely without having to migrate the entire application to LabVIEW NXG. Yeah, and this is one of the ways we're ensuring that the software investments we make will benefit you whether you're using LabVIEW NXG or LabVIEW 2018. And since it is NI week, I'm proud to announce the release of LabVIEW 2018. Now again. Now, Jen, again, we've got limited time and a lot of great functionality. We picked just one to talk about. Right, so continuing on the theme of working together, LabVIEW 2018 now has the ability to create packages that plug into our next generation install and distribution framework. So now you can use the same mechanisms to share code no matter where it was written. This functionality, as well as WebVIs, are just two examples of how we're working to ensure that you can use LabVIEW 2018 and LabVIEW NXG side by side. Yeah, that's great. And what I'm particularly proud of is that today we're not only announcing LabVIEW NXG 2.1, but we already have a preview number one of LabVIEW NXG 3.0 posted, and preview number two of NXG 3.0 is going to be available in less than a month. So again, keeping up this theme of getting a lot of software to you really quickly. Now, when we created LabVIEW NXG, our goal was not just to create the next generation of LabVIEW. It was to create also a set of reusable software components out of which we could compose other applications. Now, we're starting to build some of those applications tailored at optimized workflows that don't require a development environment. We already saw one of those earlier when Santiago demonstrated FlexLogger, which is our configuration-based data logging solution. For another example, let's talk about Instrument Studio, which is focused on interactive measurements for test systems. Kano, I know your team's been working on this. Tell us a little bit about Instrument Studio. Yeah, it's great to finally announce it. Instrument Studio is a completely revamped software environment for our PXI modular instruments. We redesigned our approach to software panels by combining them into a single view and then focusing on usability. On the screen, we have an oscilloscope function generator, and DMM. If we capture screenshots or measurement results, those will also be combined, which is great for documenting a complete system. The project, including all of the instrument settings, can also be saved, so users can easily reproduce and share their measurement setups. Now, on the second tab, we have the outputs of a dozen buck converters being measured by several multi-channel SMUs. 
the SMU panel in Instrument Studio can channel expand across all of the devices in the system. So if we configure the output on one of the channels, we can see the effect on the entire system. Yeah, and Kanal, we should mention that Instrument Studio isn't solely for interactive usage. It also helps you uh, build automated test systems and then debug them also. Yeah, that's right. So we can easily reproduce our interactive setup by exporting an oscilloscope configuration file, which includes all the instrument settings, to LabVIEW. And this is going to allow users to have confidence that their measurement results and instrument settings are going to correlate with their automation code. Now, when we run the VI, Instrument Studio takes it to the next level by automatically becoming our debugger and displaying the instrument's current state. And at a breakpoint, we can even take control of the instrument. And this is great. This is going to allow our users to more rapidly debug their code without having to modify it. That's great, Kanal. Thank you. OK, Josh, your turn. I've been teasing the audience all afternoon about the next announcement. Now, we heard a lot of requests for systems management and data management from the customers. And I know we've heard that from the audience. So tell us about System Link. Sure. Last year at Deny Week, we preview, provided a preview of the System Link uh, systems management capabilities. With the System Link web application, users can coordinate the deployment of NI and non-NI software to multiple systems simultaneously, dependency-aware component-level updates. In the latest release of System Link, we're expanding upon our systems management and performance capabilities. Users can now leverage pre-installed monitoring services to track critical system attributes, which can be expanded through our programmatic LabVIEW and web APIs. When accessing performance data, users can review historical trends through our interactive web interfaces and customize alarms and notifications to match your system's parameters. In addition, we're introducing the System Link uh, test module. This enables users to track test stations through user-defined dashboards across a group of connected systems. From here, you can view the detailed test results for each station, as well as access the files that were produced by these tests, and see the detailed step information, including the test limits, parameters, and measurement values. Looking forward, we're working on some exciting new features for System Link, including things like utilization tracking, as well as additional analysis capabilities. We are excited to work with you, our customers, and partners on our journey to build systems faster and manage them better. Thanks, Josh. That's awesome. I know that's going to go a long way to address the systems and data management requests that we've been hearing from our customers. Thanks, everyone.